Good morning, and welcome to Coffee with Vern. Oh, didn't you miss the cheesy glasses and the red sweater? I know I did. Oh, man. Last week was a lot of fun. We enjoyed making that episode. A little seriousness that you had some time with James. But now Vern is back, and the cheese is great. But you know what is so good about the cheese? The cheese grater. It's about to grade the cheese because, man, we about to slam down today. So if you have not put on your big boy pants and your belt, you might need to. Because hold on, we're kicking this episode into fifth gear. This is so good. Oh, man. Oh, what a day. The, the diesel is in the pot. A new brew. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that brew. Um, I've got a new cup given to me by Brethren Morris. How about that? So we're going to get to use a new cup. Spurge and Luther have joined us for this episode, but why? I think it's time. Jesse, is it time to break the news? I think it's time to break the news. Unfortunately, this is the final episode of Coffee with Vern right here. I think Spurgeon's weeping. I am. You know, these are the first two that joined me uh, for the show. And, um... This is it. This is this is the final episode right here. But I fooled you. You, you know why? Because here's why. We are going to do a podcast. It's coming. It's time. It is time. It is time. It is time. That's all I got to say. I don't know why I'm repeating myself, but it is time. This has been something in the working for close to a year, people. And so Coffee with Vern is transitioning to a podcast. And I feel like I should be like on The Price is Right and be the guy in the background and be like, and here, Drew, tell them what they've won. And so it's going to be awesome. But I'm excited about the upcoming days. We're going to tell you all about that in upcoming days. And so it's going to be good. But uh, Coffee with Vern is now going to be a podcast. And it is going to be set up in the idea of talking theology, heavy thoughts. We may cover some of Pastor Larry's sermons and go through the text and just like have some fun with what he has labored over so that you hear it again. Uh, we may cover something we talked about in youth. We may be talking about some cultural topic. We're going to be all over the spectrum, but the goal is to make sure that you have a great Christian worldview when you walk away. I can't wait. If you've listened to Wretched Radio, it's not going to be a spinoff from Wretched Radio because I'm not Todd Friel. I'm not freakishly tall Todd Friel. If you listen to it, you know why I'm saying that. He's like six foot, I don't know, but he's huge, and he's got a really deep voice, and I love him, and I really want to meet him, and he lives in Atlanta. And Todd Friel, if you ever watch this, I'm one of your biggest fans. All glory to the Lord, though. And so uh, it's going to be kind of like that, though, in the sense that we're going to be talking about cultural stuff. We're going to be talking about whatever. I'm excited, but the goal is to help you put your life and focus towards the Lord and glorify Him. Um, We're going to have some special guests. Brethren Morris is going to be one of our uh, most often special guests if he is willing to join me again. I usually humiliate him. I feel so bad for him. Uh, I've got some other special guests that are gonna be. I'm gonna bring in some friends from Greenville. Jesse's gonna be on there a couple of times. It's gonna be awesome. The man behind the camera is coming from out the camera, people. This is exciting times. Oh man, uh, we are gonna be having so much fun, so much fun. And then once a month, you ready? Another special occasion. Once a month, coffee with Vern, question style, where I'm putting on the sweater and the glasses. We'll be back. Once a month. But other times, it's going to be like some core stuff. I'm excited, dude. If you can't tell, I am pumped. The equipment's coming in tomorrow. Man, it's going to be a good week. Wow. So that's what you have to look forward to. But it's still going to be coffee with Vern. We're going to be sipping on coffee. I'm probably going to be talking about the coffee I'm drinking. And guess what? There's also going to be a special segment. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but there's going to be a special segment. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be good. So... That's what you have to look forward to. But today, why are we here today? That's the question. So let's get the coffee in the pot and let's have some fun. Okay. Oh, man. This brew. One final time at this table. Let's get a little. Oh, look at the steam. This, All I'm saying is this is like topsoil that I put in here. Um, it, you know, if you're a coffee connoisseur, when the water 
is coming through the coffee and it takes like a hot couple of minutes to get through, that's some strong stuff. That, that's some strong stuff. And so let's see what we got. This is brought to you from Bridge City Coffee in Greenville. Nicest people in the world. Hundred. hundred let me just brag. Nicest people. I went through the drive through and I was like, yo, I want to try that lavender basil thing. First of all, lavender and James don't agree. Or Vern, they don't agree. And so the next day was not fun. Um, but I was like, I want to try the lavender cold brew basil thing. And she's like... It's pretty good. I'm like, yeah, let me try it. She said, but if you don't like it, I'll make you something different. And I won't even charge you. And I was like, really? I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, Arby's, you need to get behind this. Chick-fil-A, you need to get behind this. Come on, fast food. If I don't like it, you should remake it because my dollar paid for it. And she was going to give it to me. So props to Bridge City. This is the Flow Brew. It's got orange in it. I'm excited. Whew, it smells good. Let's get in this. Let's go ahead. Let's dive right on in. Whoa, whoa, the orange is real, it is real. So this is gonna be a good day. Let's take the glasses off and let's have some fun. So people, let's have some fun. So what are we talking about today? I kinda wanna, I kinda just wanna throw down like WWE style, like John Cena! John Cena! Like that kind of thing, like I want that to happen. So if you're like, man, I like coffee with Vern because it's just chill. Not today. Not to it's the final opportunity for me to hit this table in front of you. So it's going to happen, okay? Here it is. And so let's have some fun. So over quarantine and COVID, right, it's been, it's been a season, would we all agree? It's been a year, would we all agree? I think we could all agree. Um... And we've had some opportunities to kind of talk and discuss and reflect, if you will, on the past, what, four months now? Is it March, April, May, June, July, five? Um, yeah, it's, it's been some time. And so we all have reflected to some degree, right? Would you agree? I would agree. To some degree, you have reflected in this time. Maybe you weren't working, and so you were at home working like my dad. He's had a lot of time to reflect because he's worked from home. Um, or like, let's use us for an example. We didn't have students in here for three months, and so I came to the office and prepared stuff to do online. I had a lot of time to reflect because there was a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with myself, <laughs> just lonely. Um, not a lot of student activity, not a lot of people through the church hallways. Or maybe you're a student and you're out of school. Maybe that's what it is, and you're just like, not doing anything. And if you've been playing Xbox, you need to get off. Or if you've been on the game consoles, they ain't gonna take you nowhere, okay? Three down right there. Um, but, you know, this has been a time for us to sit back, slow things down, because I'll tell you, before quarantine, it was everything pedal to the metal. Like, holy moly. We had just finished a D now. I'm talking like we were cooking. I mean, the turbines were going, the engine was hot, like we were flying. And I was like, life was not slow at all. And then this happened. And so I've had a lot of time to reflect, and I want to kind of share some of those reflections with you, if that's okay, uh, this morning. And spend just a little bit of time, and then I want to end with talking about this book again, Gentle and Lowly, because it is rocking my world. Um, so let's do that. Sound good? Number one, so Reflections with Vern. It's awesome. I have a, a uh, I've told you this, I have a blog and I wrote some reflections on that. This is gonna be a little different style. Reflections with Vern. So, number one, what is the number one reflection that I've kind of pulled from this? I'll tell you how precious time is. Have you ever thought about that? Like really, sat down and thought about how precious time is? Um, so over this quarantine, first of all, it has been a long four or five months depending on how you gauge it. Uh, but also, it feels like it's flown by at the same time. Now, you may not feel that way. I feel that way. I feel like yesterday it was just marching. We were in the NPC having regular youth, and I was going in on Genesis with the students. Like That feels like just yesterday, but at the same time, that feels like a millennium ago. <laughs> like, holy cow. Um, but I've had time to really step back and go, wow, time is short and precious. James talks about in the book of James that life is just a vapor. Uh, life is just a vapor, a mist. Um, and when you really think about that concept 
Um, I'm one that loves the mornings, the morning dew, the morning fog, the mist that you see. You think about how long that sits, right? It's not a long time when you see it. It kind of, as soon as the sun pops out, it's gone. And I, I, that's the kind of image I get with the idea of what James has written, that life is a vapor, a mist. It's just there and gone. Um, now, that's in comparison to eternity, really, right? Well, if, if he's making that assumption, it's based off of another assumption. That is that eternity is very long. And it is, as we know what the definition of eternity is, forever. Uh, in the Hebrew, olam, for, uh, forever is eternal and forever. They're together. And so life itself, though, physically here on earth is just a vapor and a mist for us. But when we think about it as a believer, right, we are in eternity with Christ, though, when we step out of this physical life. And I've had a lot of time because guess what? Death has been real in the face. Would you agree? I would agree. I mean, it has been right in front of us. Um, death with COVID, but also death within just our church with other things, right? People are still dying of other diseases. It's not just COVID. But there has been a lot of death right now. It's been in the face. And so it's made me have to sit back and go, wow, uh, this is real. Because as a 23-year-old, I don't just sit down and think about death, right? I, I, as a 13-year-old, you don't just sit down and go, yeah, death, that's coming. We don't have those thoughts. Why? Because we're considered young culturally. Um, we're considered young in this age. And so that's not something we think about. Um, but I've had time to sit and dwell over that. And I'll tell you, the, the takeaway for me is, Lord, yes, life is a vapor. It is a mist. But, Lord, let me live it to the fullest to glorify your name. Um, I was talking to one of my friends about uh, just future. like, And I, I think one of the things a lot of my friends were talking about when they got their jobs is like what their retirement looks like. Uh, you know, I, I hope to live to this and then retire. And I was like, I ain't retiring. Do you really retire from ministry? That's a topic worth discussing. John Piper's got a good article on that. Um, but I'm sitting here thinking, Lord, let me from right now till the day you call me home give you everything. Absolutely everything. Because I'll be honest with you, I let too many days pass by without sitting and dwelling with my king. I let too many minutes pass by without dwelling with my Lord. How about hours? I mean, when you really dissect the days, 24 hours, and then you get into the minutes and the seconds of it, why is it so hard for us to give the Lord 10 to 15 minutes of our time? When you think about 10 to 15 minutes in comparison to 24 hours, that's nothing. And how many of us really even sit and dwell with Him for that? And so then the question to me is, why not even longer? I mean, the, the, the enemy wants to busy us. He does. Because what does it do? It takes your focus off of dwelling with the Lord. Because in order to dwell effectively with the Lord, you have to sit in peace. Um, there has to be some form of shutting off so that you can just center in and hone in. And so that's been one of my number one uh, reflections is, God, let me live to the fullest. And also, let me take a step back to where my dwelling with you is real and genuine. That it's not just 15 minutes so I can go, oh, I did my quiet time today. Lord, I'm doing good. No, let it be, God, let me have every minute that I can with you. And, and then when I'm not doing something, let me go back to being with you constantly. So that's number one. Slow down time. Let's not over busy ourselves. I could go in on that for a while. Number two reflection for me has been, uh, if I don't watch the news, I'm not a news guy. I'll watch it occasionally. It's not my favorite thing to watch. Um, but it's very in your face everywhere. Um, my phone, I'm kind of ignorant when it comes to technology. I don't know how to shut it off, but Fox News sends me something every time. And I'm like, I don't even know who set this up because I don't remember clicking, hey, I want Fox News alerts. Don't even have the app. And so I'm constantly seeing the headline or something. One thing I've noticed more than any, and when you study scripture, you see it. But I think when we see it in our time frame, it's even more real. And that is the depravity of man, the sinfulness of man. Now, I'm talking about myself as well, but just around us, the sinful state of man. I'm, I mean, we're talking crazy stuff going on. 
I feel like every time I turn on the news locally or if I hear it from a, a global network or a national network, it is always talking about someone has just gotten shot. Someone is dead because someone murdered them. Or, oh, these people are raping and killing and this and that. I mean, it just feels like it's boom, boom, boom. And if you are a sheltered kid, guess what? You haven't seen all this stuff. But I, it has just been so in the face. And I'm like, Lord, we are sinful. Like, what, what do you want with us? I mean, how does a holy God desire any affection towards a sinful man? Because it is unreal. And I think when we study the scriptures, sometimes we just go, oh, yeah, idiot Israelites. How dare they even do that to God? But are we any better? No, we're not at all. And it has just hit me in the face. And so I've had to cry out to God and say, Lord, put me in the place of where sin, there's a hatred for sin at, at, at fullness, that there not be even a desire to even... Uh, even be in close proximity with it, that I even wouldn't fiddle with it, but that I would desire your holiness so much that my hatred for sin would ever abound. And that in me there'd be such a desire for purity and desire for your holiness that I am willing to daily seek your face so that no sin is near me. Look, we, I'm teaching a series on it right now with the youth uh, about the flesh. We dwell within our flesh until he calls us home, yeah. But as a believer, you have a new spirit because you were dead, and now you have the spirit of God, right? And you have a new life in Christ. Um, as Paul tells us to put on the new self in Ephesians. And so my, my desire has been, as I see the world raging, is first of all, Lord, Lord, come, even so come quickly. Number two, Lord, may I have no desire for sin and only a desire for you. We have to desire Jesus. I mean, to the Christian, to the believer, if you call yourself a believer, and I'm calling myself out, all right? I'm telling you, we're putting our, I'm putting myself in this. But to us as believers, if there's a desire for the world at all in us, we need to get on our knees and cry before the Lord and weep. That's number two, because it's real. And number two leads into number three, and here, let me get a sip of coffee before we go into this one. This one's going to... Hmm. Orange. I don't know if this is strong enough for the next point. We'll see. All right, so number three. So the number three reflection that has... And I'm not looking at the camera because it's just painful to say. Um, the number three reflection I've taken away from this is... The state of the church has been one of my reflections. I have reflected over the state of the church. Now, not West Stakers particularly. When I say the state of the church, I mean globally. And I also mean locally, like as far as us. But I'm more on the spectrum talking about globally. We'll get into the, the narrower later. But let's talk globally. Um, as I look at the nation raging and the, the world raging, I go, what is the church doing? Are we being a light in the darkness? Because we are a city on a hill, according to scriptures. The ecclesia, the called out church, is a city on a hill. So are we fully, actively being that city on a hill? And the answer to me is no. Um, I believe that God has called the church to be that light in the darkness. right? Because as the church, we are the bride of Christ, the King. And so, therefore, we represent him. If we are in marriage with him, we represent him. That means we are unified with Christ. Just like the covenant of marriage is physically here, we are unified one with Christ. Did you ever get that imagery, people? Hello, wake up. Have you ever gotten that imagery that marriage is a representation of the relationship to Jesus to the church? Come on. That's another, I, I could preach on that. I'm not going to. Not, that's not for here. I don't have my black podium to slap on. Uh, but the state of the church, and what I mean by that is the sinfulness of the church um, and the apathy of the church. Now, let me talk about the sinfulness of the church. Um, let me tell you, if quarantine has done anything for uh, the church in a sense, it has weeded out and it has really showed the false prophets and the false teachers and the false churches. 
Uh, there are some big boy mega churches, and I don't even like calling them churches, that are making a fool of themselves right now. Uh, one believes that we can act like Gandalf, and the Spirit of the Lord is going to do something for us. The Lord of the Rings, since that has anything to do with my Jesus, okay? In a church setting. Another one believes that he can blow the wind of God on COVID, and it's just going to evaporate. Yeah, that, I don't think that's how it works. Um, another one believes if we pray for prosperity, wealth, that COVID's just going to... We got some serious issues going on, people. Some serious issues. And I'm telling you, the Lord has really used this time to show, yo, here's the wolves in sheep's clothing, okay? Here's my church that I have called. So there's one, there's the sinfulness, the idiocracy of man and the idiocracy of what they call themselves a church. That's been fun, really fun. But more than that, let's get to the heart of it. Let's get to where this may hurt you and it hurts me. And I hope if it doesn't hurt you, there's a problem. The apathy of the church. And I, I'm not going in on the sinfulness of the church anymore right now. That's for another podcast when you don't see my face. The apathy of the church. And what I mean by apathy is the lack of desire in this time to seek the Lord. The lack of the desire to cry out to our God. I believe, man, this is tough stuff, Jesse. I need a sip of coffee. Wow. Um, I believe that we have mistaken in our lives um, what a true relationship relationship with Christ is. Um, for America, and I'm just going to go ahead and call us out. I, I'm, I'm, I'm done sitting on the sidelines. I'm sorry. I don't give you cupcakes. We're just going to go through the bushes together. For America, Jesus has become just the, oh, I'm going to call on you when I need you, actually. That's what he's become. He's become the uh, toy on the shelf or, or the genie in a bottle. Hey, God, I need this right now. Can you... Can you come and make this better? Oh, I'm sick. Can you heal me real quick? Instead of our Savior and our absolute everything, he's become a genie in a bottle. And it hurts. It, it, it disgusts me. Um, also, Jesus has become, to some people, a political matter. Uh, that he is just, oh, yeah. He, I, because of this, I'm going to go with this. Um, that we try to make... Jesus, a political figure only. Um, I'm not getting into that right now. That's not, that's not for today. Um, I also believe that Jesus has, for many people, has just become the get out of hell free card. Um, and for you that think that, that's a rude awakening coming because it's not how it works. It's not, hey, hey God, I don't want to go to hell, so I, I'm trusting you, I believe in you, and then I'm going to live my life like a hellion the rest of my life. I'm afraid, brother or sister, because if that's what you think, you're headed to hell. He didn't actually purchase uh, your sin on the cross because you have not fully surrendered. Um, and, and it's hard facts, but church, wake up. James, wake up. Like, let's wake up and let's realize who our king is. He is sovereign Lord. COVID is in his hand. Guess what? When he wants COVID to leave, it's going to leave. When he wants to speak it to leave, it's going to. It's going to be like that. But right now, we as a church have got to wake up and say, God, but you're on the throne. And if I am in you, my life is secured. And I'm not living for this life, right? I'm living for the next. If, you're, if COVID has been detrimental to you in the fact of it shut down all your favorite things, man, I can't go shopping, I can't go to Disney World, I can't do this, get over it. Get over it. People are dying. Souls are at stake. Get over yourself. It's not about you. right? It's not. It's never been about you and it never will be about you. It's about Jesus. Gosh, I need a, I need a cold bottle of water and a wet rag. I'm sorry if I've hurt some people's feelings. Actually, I'm not. Um, I'm not. I'm just, I'm, I'm in pain. Man, this is the only time I can be real, okay? I'm just, I'm in, I'm in pain because I know who my king is. And I want to tell you about my king real quick. Enough of calling people out. Okay. 
And well, this is a longer episode, but I need someone needs to hear this. I needed to hear it, so I believe someone else does. My king is the one that says these words. And you know what? We're actually going to pull out the text itself. My king is this one. Let me tell you about him. His name is Jesus. And if I start crying a little bit, we might have to edit it. But I wept in the shower this morning worshiping because of what I read this morning and what I heard. I look forward to the podcast because it's going to be good. And we can go in like this. My king is this one. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. So let me tell you about my king real quick, and then we'll close out, okay? Sound good? My king is the one that says, those are mine, and they will never be cast out. My king is the one that says, all that the Father has given me will come to me. My king is the one who has purchased his sheep on a cross, and guess what? You know what purchase means? Bought. They're his. They're secured. To the end. He says, but I will raise up on the last day. That's my king. I know where my life is secured. I know I, I do personally. And that is with my king, King Jesus. And I long for the day when I can see him sitting at the right hand of the Father. And I can fall on my face and just go, holy are you, God. And here's why. John Bunyan talks about this passage, John 6, 37. I got to go fast. I will never cast out. And this is what he says. Um, and, and they give like this whole idea and concept of no matter what rebuttal you can say, Jesus says, I will never cast you out. Uh, some of you may have thought this, right? And this is what it is. Here's the concept of man to Jesus. But I am a great sinner, say you. I will no wise cast out. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I am an old sinner. I will in no wise cast out. But I am a hard-hearted hard sinner. He goes on to say, but I'm a backsliding sinner, meaning you're running to old sin. But what does he say? I will in no wise cast out. But I've served Satan all my days. But I will in no wise cast out. He goes on to say, but I have sinned against you. I will in no wise cast you out. But I have no good thing to bring with me to you. I will in no wise cast out. And he goes on to say, the promise was provided to answer all objections and does answer them. He ends this chapter with saying, it is not what life brings to us, but to whom we belong that determines Christ's heart of love for us. So no matter what life brings, in no wise would Jesus cast out his sheep. What is ever in his sheepfold stays in his sheepfold. He runs after the lost one and pulls them back. He leaves the 99 to chase the one. And guess what? In no wise will he cast out his people. And our servant, our Savior, is gentle and lowly, meaning he is approachable and that he is not far off. And in my mind, because I read a lot of heavy stuff, I have had this skewed idea that God is so far off and that I am, if there was a court scene, that there's no way that they would let me to him because he is so far off. But guess what? That's not my God. My Jesus, my King, my Lord is the one that's right there saying, come with arms wide open. Come to me. Let me give you rest. Let me carry your burden for my yoke is light. And I have to fall in worship. And there's a song I want you to go check out, Austin Stone Worship, in the hands of Christ my King. Because what is the bridge says? If you're not here, then I don't want to be. I won't be moved unless you move. I need you more than the air I breathe. For us, believer, to say I need you more than the air I breathe, it means that Jesus is absolutely everything. I pray that you can say with me that all I have is Christ. Because guess what? If you can't say that, we need, we need to check our hearts. But brother, sister, I hate to say that this was a tough episode, and it may have hit you hard, but I was hit this morning. And I fell in worship and said, my God, forgive me. Pour over me your blood and wash me so that I may approach your holiness. 
gentle and lowly is our king. Till next time, hey, get into the word. Study diligently. And know this, your king, Jesus, is near. He's not far off. He's not wandered away. He is right here. And guess what? He is in the midst of everything circling around us. So if you need encouragement, let me promise you, John 6 can encourage you. Go check it out. Until then, though, love you guys. This has been awesome. Looking forward to the days to come with Coffee with Vern. It's going to be epic. Drink a cup of coffee and love your Lord and go serve your King. I'll see you soon. It is time to see our new room. Luther, Spurgeon, let's take a tour. Come on, friend. Oh, Luther, Spurge, look. We have our own room. For this is where the next chapter begins. Coffee with her. We're going to have a nice, beautiful display be right here. It's going to be a good time. So come join us, Luther and Spurgeon and Vern. It's going to be a good time. The cheese will continue.